My name is Silas, and my friends and colleagues know two very important things about me. I'm a conductor, and I love coffee, especially espresso. No matter where I travel in the world, the first thing I try to do is find the best coffee shop and learn about the local coffee drinking habits. If I can, I try to meet up with old friends or make new ones in a coffee shop, of course, so we can talk about life, art, music, or whatever's on our minds. I found that there's no better way to get to know a conductor a little better than by having coffee with the maestro. Today I'm having coffee with Jeffrey Meyer. Jeff is the music director of the St. Petersburg Philharmonic in Russia, and he's also director of orchestras at Arizona State University. A few years ago, Jeff and I served together on the board of directors of the International Conductors Guild, and every time I see him, we have really great conversation and sometimes get into some trouble. I'm going to make some espresso and give him a call this morning. Good morning, Maestro. How are you? Good morning, Maestro. I'm good. <laughs> it's nice to see your face again. It's been since last Likewise. summer, I think, of 2019. Last I saw you in Boulder. In person in Boulder, actually conducting groups, not wearing masks. Not wearing, yeah. And, uh, and being, playing and having close beers together. Should, yeah, yes. having beers also. Yes. Also not wearing masks. I guess it goes without saying that we all miss, you know, seeing people's faces and being together in a room. And uh, well, we're currently together in rooms, I think, but without masks yeah. and closer yeah. together. Well, you know, I mean, I've I've been enjoying I've been enjoying this kind of interfacing with people via Zoom. You know, there is you miss the some of the physicality of being in a place and uh, sort of sharing like like a coffee, like you know, the actual sharing a table means something. But yeah. on on the other side of that coin, I mean, you and I probably wouldn't be having this conversation had this not all happened. And I've had a lot of conversations like that. So there there are real positives about um, the connections that this issue is engendering so I, i'm enjoying that part of it actually yeah I'm, I'm enjoying these this uh series of coffee chats that i'm doing in yeah. part because i'm having coffee with people i otherwise would have to wait three years to see again exactly so. right we probably wouldn't do this that's what i was speaking saying. of coffee do you have a morning ritual what's in your cup um yes my go-to coffee actually these days is the trader joe espresso roast and it's it's excellent but i i um the ritual i do have a um i have a coffee machine that i love that i've had for now 12 years it was the only it really is the only tangible um uh thing that i came away with of the competitions that i did the conducting competitions so i did the pedrotti competitions uh three times actually the first time i was finalist third the second time i was the third place winner and then the last time i got cut out in the first round um, so that was that was a very interesting process anyway but as when i actually won a prize i don't think i got anything from the award professionally and in a tangible way but i did win something and so i went out and bought a gaggia classic espresso machine and a ranchillo um uh, burr grinder so that has been with me and so it therefore has a little bit of a sentimental value and so every morning i use that thing i make a i pull a couple shots for myself for my wife i always have um i always have uh, americano so i add water a little cream um and that's that's where that's where my day starts. And then usually another one, either around this time, this is number two, uh, or another a little bit later. But but I like the Trader Joe's blend. The the, the best, you know, I've been following your coffee um, jaunts. The best coffee that I've ever had, where is the best coffee you ever had, actually? Do you, if you had to say, this is the best, and I, and I, I, I could do. only have this coffee. I do, and because, you know, it's so, it's, I have an espresso every morning, but even so, it's always 24 hours till the next espresso. It's very hard to remember with any accuracy how yesterday's espresso was. Okay. Yeah. And then when you're talking about travels that only happen every few weeks or months or years, then it's even more difficult. So the best espresso I ever had was from a street cart in Krakow, Poland. Oh, okay. I think, did you, did you mention this before? Has somebody else asked? You I don't this? think so. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I hardly ever talk about it because it's, okay. you know, for, I don't know, for whatever reason, it feels like the best espresso I had should have been in France or Italy or something like that. I have a but similar have memory. And I, and now I wish I could remember exactly the taste of the espresso. Was it 
was it the best espresso I ever had because of my mood that day or because of how that summer was going or the travels I was, I was having like the best week of my life. I was traveling with my wife and we were just having a lot of fun. It was at the end of a fantastic summer and I went out one morning for a stroll and I bought a, you know, 90 cent espresso shot from some guy on the street and sipped it. And I went, you know, this is the best espresso I've ever had in my life. And of all places in Poland. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that well, was the best I, think, I ever had. I think context is really important for all things, actually. You know, for music as well. We we all we all have heard performances that have hit us, and it can leave somebody else completely dry. You know, so the, context is important. Um, I think especially with well, with wine. Say, you know, if somebody tells you this is a five hundred dollar bottle of wine, and you try it, your brain is going to tell you that's really damn good wine. You know, and so the, it's. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. the the best The best coffee that I've ever had, and without a doubt, um, is similar to your story, in that it's not a place perhaps you would expect to find such great coffee. It's in the in Mexico, actually, in Coatepec. There's a, a very famous coffee producing region there. Um, I've had the opportunity to go down and conduct the uh, Jalapa Symphony Orchestra uh, many times over the last decade, and um, they have a they have a sponsor which is one of the uh, top coffee producers in the region and then there's a little town called Quatepec uh, which seriously has the best coffee that I've ever had in my life and I I went so far as one time to bring um, an extra carry-on and I brought about 20 pounds of coffee back now granted you know eight months later it wasn't quite as amazing and that first that first time you have something new you know it, it sets the bar high um, but it was it was delicious coffee and it remains to this day my favorite place to get coffee i like that observation about how when you have something fresh and new when it's new to you it's it's much better than when you get used to it but yeah i, I had uh, you, you know i travel to albuquerque pretty frequently every month in fact yeah. and um, i have a handful of favorite coffee shops down there but my favorite coffee shop keeps changing right, right. because i go to a place and i go this place is amazing and then on my third visit I go, I wonder what other coffee shops are. <laughs> and then yeah. I forget about it entirely and I have a new favorite, but then eventually I make the cycle again. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like I, that I, with I music, agree. isn't it? With Probably. composers or with styles of pieces. Yeah. Or even recordings, like favorite recordings that you might just kind of overdo. But I have to, I have to tell you about the coffee cup. I chose this coffee cup just specifically for this. this it's beautiful. This, well, well, it's, it's, it's speaking of Poland, it's, actually produced in in Poland and it's called calamity wear and the the <laughs> it's it's designed in the United States but they actually sh uh, ship the design to Poland for um, like a traditional porcelain uh, uh, preparation um, but the the funny thing about it is it's called calamity wear and the idea is that things could be worse but the joke in the house is that this was definitely pre 2020 because even though there is let's see let's see if it focuses there's a zombie poodle there's uh, UFOs coming down and, and shooting things. There's other suspicious characters. And even though this is supposed to make you feel like it could be worse, the irony mm -hmm. is that this, this makes me feel like <laughs> things are pretty bad, actually. If only we had zombie poodles. <laughs> yeah, if only we had zombie poodles and UFOs. <laughs> like, that would be great. But no, we have, we have fires. We have a mess of a political system. We have, a, a, well, a pandemic, you know. But anyway, right. I had to share that cup with you. I, it, it is well, thank you. Duly... Um... <laughs> duly noted i have um you know i don't know if you've seen any of these coffee chats yet but i always i almost always drink out of this cup and it's a cheap um it's a paris themed uh, coffee cup and mm -hmm. since, I'll, since you showed yours i'll show you mine there's the oh, Chat noir out. and there's there's a various um pictures of paintings by you know the post famous posters from the early 20th century Mm -hmm. It's like a five dollar cup I got as a souvenir in some. I think I, I don't even remember where I got it. If I got it in Paris or in New York or somewhere else, but that's your go-to. It's my go-to. It's my daily cup. On special occasions, I do have a special coffee cup, and that I picked up in. Um, actually, my wife got it for me as a gift. It's it's a cup that I would have gotten at the uh, coffee shop. It's in the. It's underneath the Opera House in in Vienna. Oh, nice. And there's a coffee shop downstairs that a lot of, a lot of musicians before, know about. Before you go rehearse. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, w I wasn't there to rehearse. I wish. No, 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 no. But just in general, do you, do you drink coffee before you go rehearse? Or do I know? No, I have, a, I have an espresso every morning. Okay. And um, on occasion, I have two in a day, but I don't typically have one before I rehearse. I don't feel like I need it. 
yeah. but it doesn't hurt me not to not to have it either so yeah i usually do i have to time um i have to time it though because if, if it's too close to the rehearsal i do find that tempos get a little quick the rehearsal style gets a little drinking from the fire hose ish <laughs> and um i you know i have to time it about a half an hour before so so there's a little peak and then i and then i go for the rehearsal yeah, I want to say that caffeine doesn't really affect me that way. But on the other hand, I'm totally addicted to espresso. And I, I don't think it's not because of the caffeine. Um, but, you know, one thing I never, never, never do, which is, it seems a little strange, is I will, I will absolutely not conduct after having a beer or any alcohol at all. Oh. I'm as strict I, about that as I am about driving. <laughs> because, uh, because it affects even half a beer yeah. an hour later. It, it you you know generally a full grown adult doesn't really feel half a beer yeah. an hour after they've had it but it's still there there's some like microscopic yeah I generally don't drink anything before rehearsal either um, I'm trying to think of I mean you know I spent a lot of time in Russia Russia and there's there's a lot of drinking there um, but yeah generally I avoid that as well I mean I I think probably I I've had a glass of wine for lunch and then. Um, me well you know what i think i avoid it as well yeah i avoid it as well i like to be as sharp as possible you know it's a big responsibility to stand up in front of a bunch of people and now you, you have a lot of experience time. uh with with russian orchestras or a russian orchestra but you've spent yeah. a lot of time over there i i have yeah. only been in russia once yeah and the experience i had was pretty funny on the day of the dress rehearsal the orchestra like the whole orchestra got drunk on the lunch break oh god <laughs> and then Seriously? the the afternoon rehearsal was a total wash. Oh. We might as well have not had a dress rehearsal. Oh, oh, that's I. I never had any experiences like that. Most of um, those kinds of experiences were after concerts, happily. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've I've worked there now for almost, gosh, almost twenty years, um, and it's informed a lot of who I am as a musician. And and I never dreamed that it would be continuing for more than a couple of years and it ended up being the staple of my professional life and i i've i've grown so much as a conductor from interacting with musicians there i mean they have you know russia is a complicated place like every other um cultural environment but there's there's a there's a narrowness to the tradition um there which has positives and negatives i mean one of the one of the negatives is that the repertoire remains the same the you know it's it's a very very conservative kind of um uh, linear um, progression of teaching and um, repertoire but there's positives to that as well I mean there's there's a richness of tradition which is quite intense and there, there's um there is a an expectation of conductors there which has is tied to that tradition and I found that I was always inspired by that I always had to be on my best kind of conducting behavior work um, and and that when you showed that you were competent um, the response and respect for musicians was very quick and I I really enjoyed that and I've experienced that very few other places mm -hmm. I mean there were times that um, you know with with really good players where you, I'm sure you've experienced it where you can just sort of just give an eyeball to somebody and and they understand and, and there's this quick kind of response and it becomes really a fun process. Um, so yeah, I, and you know we've recorded f I think five albums there. The, I I never never thought my life would traverse um, all the things it has through my work in Russia. I'm very grateful for that time. There and I mean talk about stories. I was thinking about. Um, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about the, the competition because I, I, I knew that we would chat a little bit about the espresso machine. And I was thinking about my experiences in competitions um, and, you know, how, how they rarely, um, what I got from them was, was rarely about either a prize or not. Um, you know, the, the important thing for me about the competitions were... Um, the preparation, right? The pressure cooker of preparation of tremendous amount of repertoire in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, the intensity of, of being on the spot in a different way than you are in a concert. You know, I mean, that, that kind of, you step on the stage and you're being really observed. Um, that's a useful and difficult process to go through. But the thing that was most, I think, um, 
important or the, the what I got most uh, from them was just the connections with the people. Um, you know, the, either you, you end up, you can do one of two things when you go to a competition. Have you done any competitions? No. No. Um, you, you know, you sort of have a choice. You can kind of bury your head and do your thing, or you can kind of open up your perspective and try to connect with people. And I tend to be that kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you, you either bond with the people that you continue to advance with, or when you get uh, kicked out at some point, you bond with the people that you that didn't advance. Mm -hmm. And the friendships there that I made and the connections have lasted for, for 20 years as well. And that has been really, really wonderful. Well, I, um, I think I know what you mean. I, I uh, hadn't, uh, I, I haven't done any competitions. Now I'm too old to do competitions, but, um, but I've done a lot of workshops mm -hmm. and in part because I learn a lot at workshops yeah. and also just because of the camaraderie, I got addicted to that camaraderie very early at my first or second workshop. I just, I, uh, I just enjoyed being around other conductors and, and the stuff that happens not in the sessions absolutely. or not in the classes, well, the after hours stuff. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those rare moments that we as conductors can come together and, and um, uh, fraternize, you know, to be together, to chat and talk about our craft and have fun. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the St. Petersburg Chamber Philharmonic, the group that I have been running in, in Russia came directly out of a friendship that I made in one of those workshops with uh, uh, Singaporean conductor Daryl Ong. Uh, about a year later, then we decided he was studying in, in Russia, and we were both at that point in our career where we needed something to conduct, right? They, they don't just give you orchestras. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started to talk about uh, the culture in St. Petersburg and, and what we might be able to bring to it sort of with great audacity to even think that. Um, but it, it came out of those those relationships. Yeah. And now you've, you uh, I don't know where you're from originally. I was born in Chicago. Chicago. Okay, so you're yeah. from Chicago. And yeah, then you was, spent time, the and then you spent time like in lots of different places. You lived in Ithaca for a while, a long time. Now yeah. you live in Phoenix area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or Mesa. I mean, I, I'm not yeah, sure I, where, I, what I, part you live in, but. Yeah, no, outside of Phoenix and in Chandler. Um, yeah, I, let's see. I mean, I grew up in Chicago. I went to school in Wisconsin at Lawrence Conservatory in Appleton, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, then I went to Stony Brook out in Long Island. Uh, Stony Brook. Uh, 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 school music, uh, studied piano, did a master's and doctorate for five years. So I lived out there for five years um, and really enjoyed that time. I, I loved living both in Long Island, having access to New York City. I was in and out a lot. And it was, it was a wonderful time. And it was an incredible community at, at Stony Brook. Um, and then I, um, I spent a year, um, I, did, I did a residency in Banff as a pianist. And then I spent a year in Berlin on a grant, also studying piano. But at that point, I was starting to Get the get the itch to really move into conducting, um, and during that time there was a there was a, a negative tenure decision at an institution um, in uh, Wisconsin near where I went to school in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and a couple phone calls later um, I had my first job there, and that was only a year, and then I did the South Bend U Symphony for a while, but I lived in Durham, North Carolina. I was trying to have a personal life and a professional life, uh, which was. Yeah, I know. It's great. <laughs> uh, and so I was going back and forth then. And then I got a job in Washington State, uh, in Washington, um, on the east side of the mountains. Uh, and then I went to Ithaca. And in, in Ithaca, I was there for 10 years. And yeah. I just came to Arizona State University, I guess, four years ago. So okay. So having lived in all, in all these places, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about it the other day, too, because one of my best friends just texted me yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I just realized you've lived in all four time zones in the oh, continental well, yeah. US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hadn't even realized that. But when when you've lived in all these places, you get to experience different terrains and climates mm -hmm. and different uh, cultures and, and people. Sure. So is there a it's uh, maybe it's an impossible question to answer. But is there a part of the country that you lean towards? Or do you feel like Chicago's home? Or what? Where would you live if you could live anywhere right now? I don't know. It's such a funny question to ask. Because um well, first of all, as musicians, you know, we don't usually even get to entertain that question, right? You go where the work is. We go is. where the work is, yeah. So it's not something that I've, I would enjoy being out of the United States right now, to be perfectly honest, uh -huh. pretty much anywhere um, outside of this country. But, um, you know, I don't know. I really, am, I enjoyed the North uh, Northwest quite a bit. I, the, the mountains always call me. Um, I've spent many summers in Colorado and I feel... 
I feel most inspired in, in mountains, you know, and so the time we spent together in Boulder, I was out mm -hmm. hiking as much as I could. Um, I really like the high alpine hiking. Um, somehow that makes, makes my, you know, soul soar, heart leap. It really, it really puts a scale to things in a way that's different from hiking Appalachian Trail, for instance, and that kind of thing. We, I loved, I love living in um, um, Ithaca, New York. Uh, you know, this incredible local culture um, in terms of food and restaurants and and hiking and outdoors. Um, you know, it's a very left-leaning intellectual um, environment. Uh, I really love that. It was it was hard to leave that that environment. Um, but I guess. I've, you know, the only times I've lived in a, a major city was in Berlin, and I also love that as well. So I, I don't know quite how to answer. If there is, you know, like like Seattle is a good choice, but it's also really compressed right now, and you know, it's probably going to fall into the water. Um, so you know, like the the combination of ocean, city, and mountains is really ah. maybe Barcelona. How about that? They don't really have the mountains. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I didn't realize we had so many things in common. I also lived in Berlin for a bit when I was a master's student. Where and did you live? Uh, I, sorry? Where did you live? I lived um, near Zoo Garden. Okay. Yeah, I lived in actually what I didn't realize it at the time, but it was kind of, it's like the, I don't know if it still is, by the way, but it was at that time the Muslim neighborhood. Yeah. Because uh, rents were just dirt cheap. Yep. And I was really comfortable being in that area. All my friends like, you live there? That's a weird place for you mm -hmm. to live saying like you, white guy. Yeah. But uh, I, I really uh, loved it over there. And I think I paid like 125 bucks a month or something. Yeah, for there was one a period, of time, period <laughs> yeah. of time in Berlin where it was very inexpensive. And, and it's one of the reasons why that city is so vibrant now. There was a great influx of, of artists and thinkers who could live cheaply yeah. and, and do work, you know. And I was, I was studying, conducting at that time. And mm. it was a weird, um, I'm, this uh, coffee talk isn't supposed to be about me, but I'll just tell you very quickly. It was yeah. the year that Abato was music director of the Phil and he also had cancer that year. So there was a guest conductor every week. Okay. And I wasn't, I kind of, I was there on a student visa, but I wasn't exactly going to class every day, if you know what I mean. I basically just contacted the Berlin Phil and said, can I come to rehearsals? And they gave me kind of like a free, they just sent me the schedule and said, come oh, whenever you want. Wonderful. So I went to the Berlin Phil every oh, day for six wonderful. months. Oh, yeah. And I learned more about conducting yeah. in that six months than I have in any other, you know, multiple year period of my life. But, yeah. um, but yeah. I also fell in love with the ocean when I lived in LA and mm -hmm. then on the East coast as well. And then more recently I lived in Colorado for a couple of years. And so I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, do I like the sea better or the mountains? I yeah. like to be around big cities where there's a lot of different food mm -hmm. amenities and, and musical activity. So I like New York City, but I think I could be happy in a place like Chicago or maybe Seattle. I've never mm -hmm. even been to Washington State, so I don't know. Oh, Washington is wonderful. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. It was a very big change to move to the desert. It's a, it, I tell people it's a, it was a little bit like moving to Mars. I mean, it's, it's incredibly hot. It's, it's, um, you know, the desert is intense, right? It's not, you don't feel cozy in the desert like you might in a Northwest forest. You know, it's, it's, it has an edge to it, but it's incredibly beautiful. And, and it's really grown on me in the last four years. And there's, there's beautiful hiking. Um, the 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 light and the sun here is kind of spectacular, and there's moments where you you know you think of the desert as being kind of monochrome, but it's actually the opposite. And there's times in the in the spring which, which. Bloom. I mean the the these these cactuses bloom with colors that you can't imagine, and I, I've I've enjoyed getting to know this part of the country and really really gotten to love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also think that Arizona and maybe Utah, mm -hmm. places like that that seem mm -hmm. barren, uh, like foreign, you know, uh, really alien landscapes yeah. are really beautiful in yeah. in their own way. And and have you had enough time there? And have you had enough downtime to explore the state a little bit? Like, have you oh, seen yeah, yeah, yeah. Flagstaff yeah, and yeah. Sedona? Well, I, and... I mean, you know that I have I have three little kids. I have two twin boys who are about to turn five and yeah. a, a newer one who is like 16 months. Um, and so, you know, for me, as, at this point in my life, the city is not as attractive as the outdoors anyway. So yeah. we, we get out as much as we can. Um, when the Right now it's very hot, but when the weather cools down, we take them all hiking. And, and thankfully, the, the five-year-olds can hang. They, they really hike. 
Um, we put the little one on somebody's back, which I love because I have a little hiking companion right there and he pulls my hair and throws food at me and it's oh. very sweet. <laughs> Um, but we can go out for like serious, like four mile hikes with them, and it's it's fantastic. So yes, we have we have done a lot. We haven't gone to the Grand Canyon because the idea of keeping three small people alive near edges without fences is a little bit stressful. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, um, I know that you have a lot of things to do, so I won't keep you much longer. But I, I'm really uh, glad that we got to have coffee together today. Likewise, we didn't really talk about music, but that's okay. That's okay. We talked about other stuff, which is Indeed. sometimes a welcome. It's great to see you, Zach. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good.